ensemble, and um, we really are like a family here. I feel like I've been adopted so much so that an artist who works here on a different show said, oh, I love your parent. <laughs> Lucy, 
Hi, my name is Lucy Rodriguez. I'm originally from San Antonio, Texas, and I've been yeah. here, yay, to all the Tejanos out there. Um, I've been here uh, 31 years. Um, I graduated uh, from a small uh, Catholic institution in San Antonio, uh, St. Mary's University, and I uh, majored in English, and I double minored in Spanish and theater. Um, and growing up, I, I mean, I liked acting, I liked theater, but I, I always saw it as an avocation. I really didn't see it as a vocation. But I managed to do a few plays in San Antonio at that time. And then I got married and we moved out here and my husband said, we're on here, why don't you know? So slowly I started making my way and uh, the very first play I, I auditioned for was this blood wedding at, at BFA and I met a guy from San Antonio, Texas in the cast. And uh, Jay Ed, and he introduced me to Jose Luis and Evelina, and then the rest is history because I went and I auditioned for them, and I've been affiliated with them in some way since then. Lucy always says, We walked into this building in 1985 and we never left. <laughs> <laughs> Sal? Uh, I'm Sal Lopez. I was born uh, just off the border, Tijuana, Baja California. I raised here all my life. Um, I, I went to uh, uh, to uh, matriculate over at the Los Angeles, Los Angeles City College back in 19, whatever it was. And, uh, and my dream was, you know, to be an actor. I, I, and my, I talked it over with my dad and everything. And I was like, what was your dream, dad? What you quería una vaca, you know? <laughs> so I was just saying, you know, I said, okay, well, I, I want to follow my dream. So anyway, so I go and I, and, you know, I get there and I, I didn't think it was something that was possible. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> we have an ad in our company, a bit driving. Revenge, she got it. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so, so then, uh, just by chance, I, I ended up, you know, as a psychology manager, I ended up uh, uh, getting into Mexican dance for Protico, and I said, oh man, this is, this, I feel this in my bones. This is. This is, you know, my my uh, uh, genetic memory. So I really got into that, and then uh, I, I got into a dance company. So I did get on stage, you know, did, did some professional stuff with a company that uh, a, a beautiful girl who's not my wife with said, you know, they're having these auditions for this thing called Zoot Suit. And some of us dancers are going to go because we want the experience of auditioning. And I said, I want to go for the experience too. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing was no sweat because at that time I, you know, I was pretty fresh off the whatever. And then, uh, and then they gave me something to read, and I, and I go in, and that's the first time I saw a police, and I, and I go, and you don't remember this, but I mean, maybe you do. Anyway, it's at the, the table, you know, and I go in and give me this, this monologue to read, and I read the whole thing like this, <laughs> the whole thing like this. But you know, I knew, I knew what this was. I mean, I, I had, you know, felt it, I had heard it. I, it was something that resonated with me. And then uh, I looked up and I started laughing. I, you know, we started laughing. And then, then he goes, "Here, learn." <laughs> but, uh, you know, so then uh, that was it. You know, I left. And, and two weeks later, I mean, I forgot all about it. I was gonna go back to school, get a job, and do all that. And then I got a call. And they want you to. Anyway, so but to bring that around is. So then, later on, I, did, I was doing this play that, that, that we... That's what you did. Yes, and so then, uh, later on, I, made, I did this play with, with Luis's play, Corridos, and, and I was up in San Juan Bautista. And, oh, well, that's how I met here, uh, Evelina, we met during Zutsu. Anyway, so uh, several months or years later, wherever, we were up in San Juan Bautista. I was gonna cut this short. It's okay, it's and, okay, and, okay right? So, so, so Evelina came to see the show, Corridos, and she brought, this guy, you know, and and I'm and I'm like, who's this guy? <laughs> it's just, you know, I thought, you know, you know how you, you know, you marry down, marry up, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know how I heard about 
I, maybe it was through Emily, I don't know, they were doing this play called Hijos that, that uh, uh, Lucy was in and Elena was in and Jose Luis had directed. And, right, and, and Trini was in Trinidad Silva, uh, Angela Moya. This was in a little theater called yes. the Jorge Negrete de Estela. Yes, and uh, what did you call it, huh, Luis? And uh, what? Front, storefront. Store. Storefront, <laughs> absolutely. Anyway, uh, it was just powerful. This play was like really moving. I thought, man, I want to work with this guy. And it's him. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> just a bit. So, so then, uh, so as it turned out, I joined this other uh, acting. Uh, they were they were starting this acting group with a bunch of Latinos and everything, and and uh, and they kicked me out. I was the only one that was kicked out of that group. And we're not going to tell you who it is, but we but, know them. But anyway, <laughs> I was the only one that was kicked out because they saw me as a dancer. And Jose Luis. He said, you know, he recruited me to the group, and uh, that's why I'm here. <laughs> um, I was going to Cal State LA, and I um, was a TA, a teacher's assistant at uh, <coughs> junior high school. A lot of us were TA there at the time. Uh, Los Lobos, all of them were TAs. I was a TA. We were all, you know, it was like our part time job. And then a friend of mine, Eva Garcia, said, Hey, there, there's auditions for this play, you know, um, by Luis Valdez. And I'm like, Who's Luis Valdez? <laughs> I was just totally not, you know, part of the Chicano theater scene at that point. Um, so she basically, she basically dragged me to that audition. You know, that, isn't it, it isn't it amazing how things happen in your life? <laughs> she basically, I, the reason I went was because she was bugging me so much. I was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> and so I walked into this room at the taper. There was Lisa and Danny. I was like shaking my fist, but it was a very emotional scene. And I guess what Luis saw in me was authenticity because I didn't have any training or anything. I mean, I was like, you know, straight off of the, well, I was doing Chicano theater then. I just didn't know what Luis, who Luis that was. Um, and so uh, a few weeks later, you know, I'm the female lead at the Martina Forum. And, um, and that's where I, I meet Sal and um, a lot of other friends. Lupe Pineros, who can pass this gun say, who is also part of our, our company, who passed away um, a, few weeks ago, uh, a few years ago. Um, so Jose Luis and I met, I moved to Santa Barbara for four years, we came back. We met at a Tenaz conference. Oh yes, we met at a Tenaz conference at East Los Angeles College, where I met my other mentor, uh, Jorge Huerta. I'm so honored that both of you were here. And, um, but I was in Fresno when I asked you. We met in Fresno. Okay, I saw her in Fresno. I have to tell that story. She has to be part of the company. How did yeah. she get into the company? Oh, yeah. okay. She's done swimsuit so and everything. And then, you know, I, I thought she was, she never talked. And I, you know, I'm not into submissive wives or women at the time. I was like, I don't like, she's not smart. I don't want to. She stood up in that, in that conference and she spoke. And I went, wow, she's really smart. <laughs> so I went to her and I say, let's go to lunch. <laughs> and she said, okay, yeah, why not? And then we sit down and I say, I think we should live together. <laughs> the same day. <laughs> same day. And of course she said. I said, are you crazy? <laughs> I don't even know you. <laughs> and then um, and then we left the conference, he was following me around all weekend. <laughs> and then I Together with Kevin she went south. We went from Biddy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I heard he's really sexy. 
No. <laughs> I said, I need 
you know, to make my lab, to produce plays. And she said, I'm gonna give it to you. And she gave me $200,000. And that's how we created the lab. And that's how we started producing with the lab yeah, during that, that, that time, which was really, really important. And so we created the lab and we made it, and the members, the original members, were Evelina, Enrique Castillo, Sal Lopez, and I can say, I got a phone call when I, when I say we're gonna make the company, and I say I want you to be part of the company, the, the director of the other company called me, okay, why would you like it, he's a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the lab, Angela Moya, Trinidad Silva, and Lupio Tiveros. Uh, uh, Trinidad Silva passed away in 1988, and Lupio Tiveros. <laughs> anyway, so we did all these space administration groups there, then, I, uh, then we commissioned, we commissioned a, a bunch of writers like that, because, you know, in that time, there were not that many plays there. We didn't have that many writers writing plays. So we needed to commission people to, to write plays for the company. Commission Sherry Moraga, we, we commissioned Heroes and Saints, that's all we were doing. Uh, Jimmy Santiago Baca, Eduardo Machado, uh, Steven wants to play the blues, we commissioned him, Culture Clash, and we commissioned him for them to do all of beans, and we commissioned Mircha Sacheska, and Mircha we brought her into the company to write for the actors, and she created Stone Wedding, which we produced in 1989. And it was difficult because, it's, it's, you know, uh, she, she's a fantastic, I love her writing, she's fantastic, but you know, she was not used to work with an ensemble, so we did this play, and it was a, a, an interesting experiment, but it didn't work. And the entire idea was how can we create an ensemble inside a, of a Lord Theater? It used to be a Lord Theater when we were here, you know. So uh, we decided, well, it, it, the play was fine, it was great, Chrome was a designer because they didn't have designers in there, you know, that, that they were Latinos. So we went and decided, let's, let's do a play the way we knew how to do it in the teatro. In the Teatro de Esperanza, we used to do the collective creation. And we did, uh, we started doing research to find out how to arrive to the next, now they call it device work, but it used to be collective creation. You know, we did the research and we began doing uh, the Chicano Moratorium, the Chicano Movement. We were interested in understanding it much more. I didn't say quite, I'm from Mexico. I'm from a little town in Los Mochis, Sinaloa. So we started, uh, yeah, uh, research, researching, uh, you know, uh, we wanted to get into what happened to Robert Salazar, who was, uh, who was killed at that, at that moratorium. And so we had actually were, He was an LA Times journalist. Right, very that prominent. Very uh, prominent LA Times journalist. And uh, who really wrote about the situation with the Chicanos. And um, so we interviewed people, I mean, we interviewed Restrepo, who was the guy who was with him. We interviewed the, one of the, uh, I, I got a hold of a, one of the policemen who was actually at the, at the scene. We did a lot of research and, and I interviewed his, his wife, Sally Salazar. And uh, so the play was, uh, a lot of us who were in the company, you know, under the guidance of Jose Luis, we, we, we'd write, you know, we'd write uh, different things that were, that were pertinent. And then uh, toward the end of that process, eventually, we needed, the voice needed to be narrowed uh, of, of, the, of the story. And so the final product was really written by Evelina and Enrique Castillo, which became August 29th. But we still kept an alias, so we used letters from all of our names, and we created this author whose name was Violeta Calles. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, anyway, so and one of those uh, one of the interesting things about that uh, play, uh, in one of the reviews, uh, I played the character Benny for Benedict Arnold because he's a, he's one of the infiltrators, and and the uh, the Times reviewer said that it was that it was just not plausible that that just couldn't be, etc. And then Rudy Acuña actually read the, he wrote this rebuttal that was uh, incredible and they eventually uh, published it on in the LA Times. So, it, a lot of stories, but during that 1990, we did that, it was very successful, which kind of, you know, we had brought this new idea into, 
inside the institution, but you know they were suffering through economic crisis and the theater. And in 1991, in October, the uh, comp the company, the Sanchez Theater Company, uh, declared bankruptcy because the city, the city took the money out of the LPC. They used to get give them seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year for the maintenance and the operation. And so they took the money out, and, and the other one there would say, we can't do it without the help of the city. So they, they took their boxes out, the trailers came, took the lights, everything, and the police came and locked the doors. And we as a company say, we're not leaving. We want to stay in here. So we slept inside the theater for 11 days. Wow. And we say, no way. Uh, so we had a press conference, and you know they finally decided after 11 days we were not going anywhere. They decided, okay, we are going to give you the money, and then they say you want us to, you want to be hired by the city, and we say no, I don't, because Gordon Davis so had come and asked us to move the company to the the table, the market floor, and we say yeah. And during the time we reverse the weekend, we we borrowed the the script for from Luis to do La Virgen de, de, de Guadalupe. And we were rehearsing La Virgen inside, inside the, uh, the thing. And we went out and became part of the CTG, the, 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 the undertaker. We created, again, I went out and raised $5 million for a very ambitious initiative, a very ambitious initiative, which is called the Latino Theater Initiative. And the deal was we were going to have one main stage show at the Mark Taper a year, plus 10 commissions every year. And by the fifth year, which was the end of the initiative, we were going to do the entire season of the Taper <laughs> with Latino <laughs> play. <laughs> okay, that was the initiative, initially. And, but, you know, we were able, they were able, we were there from 91 at the end to 95. And the, but we were able to produce that in the making. We were able to produce Carpa Clash with the Culture Clash. We were able to produce a Bandido from Luis Valdez. And we were able to produce a Florida Highland. So we did in the history, understanding that since since Sutsu, that they had not produced a Latino play until this moment happened. So because of you know, it's, it's difficult to, to, to be a company inside of an institution. We moved out, we decided let's go back to our roots, and let's go back and we moved to Plaza de la Raza, you know, which is a community center in East LA that had a small little theater. So that, at that point, that is when the Latino Theater Company was created. That's the point when we became independent. We, we, uh, we were called the Latino Theater Lab. Now we call ourselves the Latino Theater Company. We became a nonprofit organization. Um, we we had our we created our own season at Plaza de la Raza with La Victima and um, August 29th for the for the 25th anniversary. anniversary of the Chicago Oratory. And then um, that was the first time we also started to produce our own. I co-produced that particular play. Mm -hmm. So we started producing our own stuff, and that was kind of like the first time that we worked outside of an institution. Um, it was at that time that when we were at the CTG that there was a contest at uh, Plaza de la Raza, and Sam Lopez dared me to write a play. And um, that's when I wrote, How Else Am I Supposed to Know I'm Still Alive? So that was the first time that um, into the 
Hill, which is something that we've done several times since. And so, I, I mean, we, we haven't mentioned that we're all theater actors, but we're also all, we work in film and we work in television also. It's kind of like the combination that this had really worked for us, right? And so, How Else was the first time that we did an independent movie. And um, after that, we made others. I mean, I don't know. Well, because you got, you got, it was a very, got us into the studios. They got us into the studios. People wanted to talk to us about doing a film and got us interviews, and they want to talk to Evelina, and she pitched, uh, we were working, and she pitched uh, a film called Luminarias, and it was about four Latina professional women, but at the same time, uh, Sony Pictures was doing Waiting to, to Excel, excel. Yeah. To excel yeah. and, and they said we can do They couldn't do <laughs> so, so we needed a play for that season, I said, look, why don't you just adapt the screenplay to a play? So I, I, I produced that play here. Oh, these are the, this is about the, That's the, about this is the But anyway, so we produced that film, uh, the play here, and, and then we decided to make it into a movie. And uh, we, we raised money by just asking our friends and family, uh, because we didn't know any better. And uh, we, we, we started uh, just you know raising, raising the money, really grassroots, grassroots. I mean, our dentist, you know. Uh, we really wanted to, to be a part of it. And then we didn't, we started shooting before we had all the money, which is really insane. It's crazy. <laughs> but, but we did. We started because we had the location that one of, a, uh, one of the people who was a fan of ours said, you could shoot here at our house. And we said, okay. So, <laughs> so we, we, we used the, the, that was one of the main locations. And then from the footage that we had, uh, we started showing it to different people who might be interested in, 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 in uh, investing. investing, which, I mean, it was anywhere from $500 to $20,000, whatever people wanted to invest. Anyway, we finished the film. We, uh, we asked Cheech, and he was, you know, he was gracious enough to do the movie. Scott Robert, Bakula. Scott Bakula, Robert Brown, when we went to go uh, talk to Scott Bakula, because we, you know, we were looking for somebody to play the, the, the role of the, uh, the angle, the, the, the white guy, angle guy. And uh, anyway, we got this meeting over at the, wherever he was at the time. I think it was Raleigh Studios. Yeah, Raleigh. And we go over there, and, and I'm, I'm in there, and, and, <laughs> and we're, we give him the pitch. You know, he had read the script, and he says, wow, you know, he's, he's going to do it. And, I, and I'm walking out. Because Luis and I are walking out, and I go, and I'm going, Padre, we got Scott Bakula, man. We got Scott Bakula. And I go, Padre, goes, I'm Scott <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so we were very fortunate. We took it to different uh, <coughs> film festivals. It was very successful. We got Best Actress in the, the Spain uh, Film Festival and many, many awards that we got all over. And uh, that was kind of our first kind of distribution. We it opened in Los Angeles in 40 theaters in 2000. So it was pretty remarkable for an independent and, 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 and you know, it's at Netflix and then on the UK. And we took it to all kinds of festivals. If you want to buy it, if you want to buy it, ask that. <laughs> Actually, we were invited to uh, the, the, the Red Film Festival in Cuba, and uh, I, I, that was just my opportunity of how I got to go there. Was, that's a whole other movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so we made other movies. Uh, we, we, uh, dementia, we adapted into a film also. It's important um, to think about dementia is that one of our best friends had died of AIDS. In 1995, Jose Salcedo. You know, and we wanted to, to talk, and it was a very complicated issue bringing him to his house. He was a friend, we brought him to his mother, and it was very complicated. And when he died, you know, we thought, you know, we have to create a tribute to Jose, and also explore, you know, this idea that there are people, Latinos with AIDS, and, and your own family. Yeah, and so, okay, so we kind of got out of order. So we, we, we were, no, That's the movie. movies. So, so we, um, we left uh, Plaza de la Raza to come back here to do Luminarias. And when we came back to do Luminarias, the play, we just said, we're back home. So. Um, the second play that we did here was Dementia, the play, and it's the first time that, that uh, as a playwright, Evelina wrote the company and we uh, workshopped it uh, for about a year and a half with 
really, really delved into the ideas of AIDS, uh, the gay community, how the effects on the family and, and outer family and friends. Um, and the first time that we incorporated uh, in live music, the very first production, we had a, a trio underneath uh, our stereo. We had a piano player, a guitar player, and a horn player. Um, so that was the, our, our first introduction of creating, we're adding live musicians to one of our main stage plays. Uh, it was originally commissioned by the Latino Theater Initiative and CTG, um, and it also garnered the GLAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation Media Award for Best Theater Production that year, and it solidified us as an ensemble and an arts organization. That last night of dementia in the audience was uh, Moctezuma Esparza and Castro de la Rocha, who are now on our board, and they had stood up and were so moved by the play, uh, Castro um, committed $10,000 to seeing the further development of this play, or getting the play to be seen by the community that, because he's in the health organization, to be seen by the community that needs to see that play. And uh, the idea of the board development came out of that night, and the and the Suma who were working out of the play, and the, this building was in terrible condition. Was, That's all right. It was horrible. Horrible. And Montezuma said, because you know we we sold out that play every night in the 500 seat theater for six weeks. You know, and and, be, and and we were coming out, and he goes, uh, Jose Luis, why don't you guys take over the theater? And I go, are you crazy? <laughs> and we say we can do it if you help us. But Lucy was, was, you know, is that where, that where we are? Yeah, so that same year that we're working on dementia, um, this, this is the summer, and uh, we noticed that there's a, a new building that's gone up a few blocks away from here, and it's the cathedral. And so plus Luis and I took a really short little tour over there, and he goes, this is where we should do La Virgen. And I said, oh. And, and so he just looked at me like, you know, go work on that. <laughs> and so uh, I contacted the powers that be at the cathedral. We didn't, I mean, I, we didn't know anybody. Um, and so we set up the meeting, and we went over there, and we made a pitch. And they were very polite and very uninterested. <laughs> and uh, they just, they were just so focused on the opening of the cathedral in September, and they were planning this three-hour mass, and they had a VIP. So they just, they, so we said, okay, well, we tried. We continued our work on dementia. The closing night of dementia, we get a call from the cathedral. And they say, so do you still have that little play? Do you want to still do that little play? And we're like, oh, and they gave us the date, and it was three weeks away. Oh. And uh, that was a little daunting. And I, I, uh, I say, and La Virgen is a pretty massive production, especially like he envisions it. And so he, he, uh, he's, he said, no, no, we have to do this. We have to accept the invitation, because if we don't, they'll figure out something else to do for December 12th at the cathedral, and then that's what they'll do. And next year when we try, they'll, they'll say thanks, but no thanks, we know what we're gonna do. So he says, we have to get our foot in the door, we have to do it. So we scrambled. I mean, we did have a little bit of a track record with, him, with La Vita, and we had done it before. So we called up everybody we knew to help us. Never mind the nine professional actors we needed, the nine leads we needed, we needed Aztec dancers, we needed musicians, we needed children, we needed people to be in the pueblo, we needed people to be in the foro. The, the venue, the cathedral, for as beautiful as it is, had a horrible sound system. So we had to go in there and address all the technical issues with it. And we did it, we, we did it. It was a very bumpy ride. Uh, the only mic that did not go out that night was Sal's. So he was like, it was great, it was great. <laughs> appreciative. And the cathedral, to our surprise, called us back and said, okay, well, let's talk about next year's production. And we were real surprised because, I mean, we had infiltrated that place for a few weeks. We had 80 to 100 people, you know, down at the cathedral at 8 o'clock at night with headdresses and musicians and children. Uh, stickers on the altar. And it was, it, you know, and they, the, the security was like, oh. Uh, and, but it, it worked. And, um, this year, right after we finish in Cuentro, we go into our 11th production of La Vita. And, um, it's weird because why do we do this show? This show is um, a big departure from our other productions. We only do original work. This is not an original work. This is the 
you know, uh, the story of the four apparitions. Avelina adapted the script from the Nicanopua, which is the uh, indigenous account of what happened in 1531. And then we do all our plays in English. This is our only Spanish language production. Our home is the LATC. This is where we do our plays. This is the only production we do outside. We only do equity productions. We, we hire equity actors. This is the only production we do that includes a large, um, a large group of people that are our community people. Um, we watch our budget very closely. We know theater is not a huge money-making venture, but we do try to stay in the black. We do try, charge admission. We have a budget, but we knew from the get-go that this was going, that we were not going to charge admission from this. So why do, why do this? And um, the five of us are, um, have Mexican roots. I mean, Sal and, and Jose Luis born in Mexico, the rest of us Mexican-American in different parts of the country. Our experiences are very different being raised here, but we were all familiar with the story of La Virgen de Guadalupe. And regardless of our religious affiliations now, or lack of religious affiliations, we, we can get behind this story because it, uh, it's a very political story. It addresses, it addresses racism, it addresses prejudice, um, but it also uplifts with a message of love and forgiveness and perseverance and redemption. And we can definitely get behind that. And what we wanted to do was that we wanted to be able to offer something to our community during the holiday season. And when I say our community, in this instance, I mean people that we're not going to buy a ticket to the Nutcracker, we're not going to buy a ticket to a Christmas Carol, we're not going to buy a ticket to the Grinch or whatever else. We, but we wanted to offer them something during the holiday season that would uplift and that would celebrate our rich culture. So. So that's why we do it. It has its special challenges, especially with funding this production. A lot of corporations do not want to fund religious shows, but we manage to do it. We do, you know, we, we do it. We contract artists, they do receive a stipend, a stipend. So a lot of people donate their time, money, energy, talent to this. And I think the biggest success we've had is that we've created a new tradition here in Los Angeles in the holiday season. People, people love this show. The show starts at 7.30 and people are there at four. Putting their sweaters, their coats on their seats, and I don't know, like, you know, it's, it's a big deal. And it's, it's very gratifying that our families have grown up with this tradition and our extended vegan family and um, kids have aged out of this show. I think the best example is Esperanza. When we did it at the million dollar, she was the, you know, five years old or whatever, and she had the opening line of the play saying, Ahí vienen los hombres barbados. And now she has played La Virgen. She's slung it through. So I don't know if this tradition will continue after the five of us sit down, but you know, to everything there is a season, and we gave it our all. And we love it. We will continue. So I think what we should do is probably scroll the images of our productions. Uh, we, we did, um, after Dementia, we did Solitude, which is another devised work. And then which after went we did, and then, oh, we did Melancholia, which was about the Iraq War. And then we did Solitude, which is another about, uh, from the writings of Octavio Paz, The Labyrinth of Solitude. Um, we took Solitude on tour for the first time and went to Nipa. We took Melancholia to the Edinburgh Festival in Europe. Um, we, uh, what else? We wrote the trilogy because we wanted, with all the immigration uh, laws and hate speech, we wanted to show the, the, the trajectory of a family, a Mexican-American family that began with the Mexican Revolution and ends with the with the war in Iraq. Um, and then uh, the last thing we did was premeditation. And hopefully, those of you who are, are here will be able to see that show, um, it, which is part of, of this encuentro. Um, the Mexico trilogy, just to say, yeah. you know, it's another ambitious project because, like, it's, it's, it's the story of, of a, a lady that we meet in the Mexican Revolution when she's 18. She no, died. she's 15. She's 15, and she dies when she's 100. 
So we track her story in three plays. And we've done it separately, but in 2016, we're you're gonna be able to come and see the three plays together. We don't like it. Everything is it's gonna be a six hour show. It's gonna be very, very exciting. And, 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 and the important thing is we, we try to track the contributions of Mexican or Mexican Americans or Chicanos to American culture and what has happened in the last in those one hundred years. So those are the really yeah. fast pictures. Uh, and and um, yes. to bring everything full circle, we just want to say that um, we were given an opportunity by Bill Bushnell and Diane White in 1985. They put us on the main stage in this building. And we've always been able to, knock on wood, um, do main, main stage productions because we believe that that's where we belong, on the main stage. Um, we were given an opportunity, and we believe that we, that we should give opportunity because we were given an opportunity. So that kind of brings us full circle to this encuentro, why we're here, you know, why we, we it's so important for the younger generation to know the history, take that history, make it your own, and you know, take over the American theater. That's that's what this whole thing is about. No, and I was just gonna say that uh, the the way that this company, you know, became about it started as a lab, and then they they became the larger lab, and we were the the little lab. And we became the burros that did the work for the larger lab. <laughs> <laughs> and then that became the name of our production company, Burro Squad Productions, when we started doing films. Mm -hmm. And then Jose Luis created yet another lab, which then created Melancholy, which went to Just want to say, so it keeps, the circle keeps coming around and around and around in this company. We want to keep that circle going and include you guys in that. I want to also just have a, a quick shout out to, you know, you see Jose Luis and Lundelina, and they're, they're a power couple. They're really really blessed to have each other. Uh, Sal, Jeff, and I also have wonderful spouses that are part of this community. Uh, Jeff, Jeff is married to uh, Lina Rodriguez, and he, they're 10 years married, and I, 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 almost. And then uh, Sal is married to Yervini. Many of you know her, an artist in her own right, and our choreographer. And I'm married to a wonderful guy named Albert Alfaro, who is truly, truly supportive of all the work we do. Last night when Lupe was up there talking, I said, you know, uh, we cannot do what we do without the love and support of our, of our significant others. Yes,